Yes. Our next guest says some charts are pointing to a yes answer to that question. Let's bring in Bill Strazulo, partner and chief market strategist at Bell Curve Trading. Bill, welcome. Good to have you with us. Let's start with the Nasdaq 100, which you say is ominously retesting uh, the sort of midpoint of its March 2020 lows. We've taken out the June lows. Uh, we're going back now to, to, um, to more than two years yep. ago. Yeah, the bottom line, Tyler, is the path of least resistance is still lower here. When you try to answer the most important question across all the global financial markets, when is this bear market going to end? When is it going to turn around? The key trend that you need to focus on is the rally off the March 2020 lows. So when we look at that relative to the NASDAQ 100, it's still in a lot of trouble. We're below the mid-range on that, which is 11,800. And now we're testing the last line of support, which comes in anywhere from 11,000 to 103. So that really needs to hold. Otherwise, you're talking about a total repeal of the whole March 2020 rally, which would take the Nasdaq 100 down to 7,000. So that's not a base case. You know, we think the market, at least at this point, will hold in somewhere between 11,000 and 10.3, but that's not a trivial probability. Yeah. Let's move on to the uh, S&P 500. What are you seeing there in terms of um, its uh, sort of um, positioning? Sure. I mean, the S&P 500 um, has more downside as well. At a minimum, we're going to test 3,500, which is the March 2020 mid-range. Now, I think you might get a short-term bump here anywhere from 3,600 to 3,650. That's basically the objective off the uh, uh, mid-August highs. But bigger picture, I think minimally we test 3,500 in the S&P 500. And that is just a place where I would cover shorts and bearish positions um, in terms of being a long-term accumulator, I, right now we're telling clients we're, we, we want to begin to buy somewhere even deeper, around 3,300. And so that is, again, uh, that, that, is that your base case or is that that non-trivial probability? Yeah. No, no. I, the base case is that we should at least test 3,500, right. which is the mid-range off the March 2020 lows. But that's a place where we want to cover shorts uh, and bearish positions. If you said to me right now, when would I look to be an aggressive buyer, I'd probably look even a little bit lower, somewhere around 3,300. So when you look across the board, even the Dow, which was the, the uh, which has been the uh, best performer on the way down, uh, which is typically the case because it was slowest on the way up, um, I still think the Dow could get down to uh, 28,000, 27.5. So we're still not at a point where I, I think you want to be aggressive on the buy side. Well, there you, see, there you see the Dow off the, off the March 2020 lows, uh, but you see it coming to that midpoint that you, that you uh, point to, and you think it could go 28,000, 27,500. Today, we are below 30,000. Right. Yeah, I mean, again, the, the Dow was the slowest on the way up, so on the way down, uh, it's given up the, the least amount of ground, and that's typically the way it happens. But when I look at the Dow right now, I think... We should definitely test the mid-range off the March 2020 lows, 28,000, 27.5. Um, that's probably the first place where I, I think it makes sense to take a look at it on the long side. But again, when you look across the board, Tyler, um, uh, you know, we're, we're not at the end of this thing yet. I, yeah. I still think there's more downside. Doesn't, doesn't feel like we're, we're near the end of it yet. Uh, I agree with that. Bill Strazulo, always good to see you, sir. Thank you, Tyler. Th thank you for talking us through it. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.